What's going on everybody? Welcome back. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than any other video that I've posted. We are actually just going to be talking a bunch about fishing and not just me. If you guys aren't familiar with the Bite Podcast, it consists of myself, Billy, Tyler, Alex, Matt McCluskey, and Ace when he can make it. But it's like the group of guys that I fish with regularly. We meet up once a week and do this podcast and share it with you guys. This is the first one that we ever filmed. I decided to post it on my channel, and if you guys want to watch more of these The Bite podcast videos, there's going to be a link down in the description below for The Bite's YouTube, and that's where the videos that are coming out in the future will be posted. So I've been taking quite a few notes when I was editing this, and there's going to be some really good changes for the video side. This is the first time we've ever filmed the podcast, so there will definitely be a few changes made. To make it better but this was the first go and i really hope you guys enjoy it let me know in the comment section below what you think and don't forget to check out the bites youtube channel which is going to be linked right at the bottom hope you guys enjoy y'all ready for this i think so you got it out y'all ready for this mm -hmm. yeah okay crank that so boy ladies and gentlemen welcome to the bite <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. Absolutely. This is the <laughs> Can I open with that? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We're back. <laughs> Episode 18. <laughs> We've got a good one in store for you guys. This is Got Gills. Alex, checking they, in. They knew. Uh, yeah, yep, they do know. By your new tagline. How do you spell that? There's a there's a few <laughs> We're Z's. We're not quite sure. Like there's an exclamation point in the middle somewhere. I'll put a, a niner in there somewhere. <laughs> we are still not sure exactly what he said. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Anyway. To the left. <laughs> it's gonna left with me forever. Spot burner TV checking in. How's it going, guys? It's Team Money back again. To my left. Billy Bates checking in. Perfect attendance. Psh. The only man with perfect attendance anymore. <laughs> Matty guys checking in. I guess I still have some PA. Semi. You missed one? Just a semi. <laughs> semi him. I mean, I, no, I, I, you. the only one that I would have missed would have been the one we rescheduled. Like, I, I think you were out of town. It was when you went to um, Florida with him and we had to move it. Yeah, so, I don't think you actually yeah, missed I missed one. I, I've not missed one. Nice. It's oh. pretty good. Good for you. Thanks, buddy. Want a cookie? Oh, look who's that'd jealous. Be, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want a cookie? You want, you, want a, you want a cookie? That cookie dough? <laughs> <laughs> you better get it before like, Fultz no, gets it. That's mine. That's mine. Be gone. <laughs> Sorry, I ate the rest of it last night. Mm. All right. So what do we uh, got in store for you guys today? We got a little tournament recap. I think the last time we set it off was right before our Potomac BFL, which reduced from. What would have been three, unfortunate Ooh, circumstances. Well, I get to talk about that today, yeah. dude. Don't I? Rip them. Right. That was um. Don't I mean, hold back. it's it. We we know another person that kind of got in that same situation. It was actually it was a little different, but they showed up at the ramp the so, morning of, and they didn't get to get they didn't even get to fish. I guess I'll just go ahead and, and say what happened. Um, basically, I had signed up for the first two BFLs. Um, in January, I want to say, signed up, paid for them, was ready to go. Uh, obviously, fished the first one at Smith Mountain, and then was supposed to fish the second one, which I believe was supposed to be in May, correct? Um, on the Potomac. Obviously, that got rescheduled because of coronavirus to that, uh, what was it June 29th? June 26th, 27th, 20 something. Like that. Uh, late June. And I was under the impression that I was good to go because uh, was, those were the first two two tournaments of the year. And you were linked with the boater. And I was linked with the boater, um, so I was a guaranteed entry for it as well. Uh, I ended up not, or I ended up calling the Friday day before for a pre-register, or to pre-register for the thing, and they ended up telling me that I wasn't on the list, and they figured out that I had been, or my payment had been allocated to the next tournament which was july 27th on the potomac yeah that was like eight days before the tournament right no this was the day before the tournament where i figured this out oh okay because i just figured that it would have 
roll, rolled over to the next tournament because that's what I signed up for the first two. Um, and so they told me that and they're like, oh, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, we'll just switch you over right now. You'll be able to fish tomorrow. You're linked with the boater. So you're, you're good to go. Uh, don't worry about it. So did that, got all that figured out. And then seven o'clock rolls around when the uh, meeting was supposed to be over. I first of all, didn't get a text with a Zoom link. And then I never got a text with my boater number or boater information afterwards. So I was kind of confused what was going on. Called the tournament director and he said that I was not going to be able to fish the next day because they need three more boats um, to, to get me in because I guess in their mind I would signed up that day. So I kind of got screwed in the whole situation um, because I was planning on fishing all these and it would have been would have been cool to be able to make the regionals and everything like that but because I missed this one it's going to be it's probably possible, but it's going to be a lot more difficult to uh, make the regionals. Honestly, probably not going to fish any more of these this year, um, but just because of a clerical error, error. And I understand that it's coronavirus and like they couldn't control that. But so it had nothing also... to do with your boater. No. It had. That's what they told you. It had you were directly linked with somebody though. Yeah. Oh, I thought it had to do with your boater blowing up his motor. On Friday, they didn't, I wonder, they didn't know I that wonder at the time. If, I wonder if Joe would have even gotten a call. They didn't know that at the time. No, that's no, I'm saying. Like, what if what if they like Joe wasn't registered for the tournament, and the exact same thing happened to him as to you? And if he hadn't blown his motor out, he wouldn't have gotten a text oh. message. Oh, no, maybe. So, like you're saying, he may have not been maybe registered. Yeah, anyways. Joe, he may not have even been registered for the tournament. Huh. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, long story short, I got pretty screwed. Um, yeah, you didn't miss a good tournament anyways. You guys played pretty well. Um, and luckily, like, <laughs> I wasn't... He was waiting for that. I wasn't too hurt that uh, that I was... That I, I'm not fishing it because I, I, I don't really need to fish the rest of these tournaments. It's not like end all be all for me. I have the Fountainhead tournaments now, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but just kind of a sucky situation. FLW did take care of me. They're, they're obviously refunding me that tournament fee and then also... Uh, prorated membership fee for the year so I think I get like $40 back I want to say because um, I only fish one of the five tournaments so how much okay. is first for those yeah, for the right. co-angler um, uh, that tournament was like was, two grand no but you 2900 oh, yeah, I know I know me and God Gills had the opportunity uh, to win 2900 I, I didn't you really want to relive this yeah let's, I was let's hear how you guys did um, go ahead Give them your day, um, rundown of your day. Yeah, my day was awesome. I mean, I had probably, I actually had this boater before in the regionals at the Chesapeake uh, two years ago. He's an awesome dude. I mean, everything that you can ever ask for out of a boater. You know, when he caught his limit, it was, dude, I do not care if you cast over, because we're in this, literally in this ch creek, lily pads on both sides, six inches of water on both sides, and it's just like a channel that's the size of a boat. So the fish were right on the edge of the channel. They weren't next to the lily pads, and you had to, and you, you just was like, dude, just throw over my shoulder. He even offered me a frog that he was catching him on. Um, and uh, I did pick up the frog after his fourth time, and he said, I'm not going to tell you again, Alex. You can pick that frog up. I had three fish in the live well, so I was kind of like, I'll just keep going with what I'm going to do. But he was catching him good. He probably caught nine keepers back there cold two or three times before I picked that frog up. And then the bite shut off, literally. Caught one more fish on the frog for the for the next hour. And so I went back to throwing the weightless Senko, kind of all you can really do when you're in that kind of a situation. Filled out my limit. I probably had seven and a half pounds, 12 inch minimum for this tournament. So those 12 inches were small, but um, he probably had about 12 and a half. So he had a good bag. For that that tournament this time of year the winning tournament weight was 17 and a half. was it 18 but it was yeah, like it was a six pounder and it was like three or four pounds ahead of the second six place pound guy. river fish there was like it was jam-packed from 13 pounds to 15 pounds for the boaters and then the co-anglers were right there at the same weight because like it's just all two and a half to three and a half pounders um so and then we were probably fishing grass too right so it was like kind of yeah, the guy, the guy who won was fishing docks. Really? Yeah. 
I'm sh- I mean, yeah, it was that's something how you get different. A big, that's how you get a big bite. I mean, you just run if you're in a grass bed with 20 or 30 other boats, it's kind of hard to get one that's a big one to bite. And I mean, going running around the river fishing all all the docks you have confidence in is kind of a better way to get a big bite, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Especially this time of year, I mean. I wonder what, how his coat did. I think, I'm not sure. Yeah. Honestly, it was probably tough for him if he yeah. was fishing docks all day. Especially because he probably caught the ones right in front of him. But we um we were after we both had limits at it was probably eight thirty, we decided to just run hard cover and um fished one or two grass flats like community holes throughout the day and I think I called one time, it was like a point two pound call. And uh we didn't really catch anything until the last thirty minutes and he said to me, What do you wanna do? You wanna go fish more docks? And I said, Let's go find some grass. And that was the cool thing about him too, it was just like he bounced things off of me. I don't know how much you're supposed to do that, but like, you can. Do it. You can. Yeah, yeah I know that you're not allowed to like share information not per se. To, not boat to boat. Oh, okay. But we pulled up on a grass flat that he knew of. He caught like a two and three quarter, which helped him about a quarter pound. He ended up fin- finishing, I think, twelfth place. Um, and then I lost two good ins. You know, those three plus pounders. I guess actually I forgot I, I did call one other time with a three and a half pounder under a dock. Um, that was kind of a lucky fish, but take it. So I could have had a chance. Uh, it would have been tight for the win. They were I weighed in a one point one and a one point seven, and these both these fish were in that three pound plus range. So and I think I lost by three pounds. I think thirteen eight it was one. Fourteen something I thought. No, it was you're right. 13, thirteen eight. Yeah, thirteen. And I weighed eight. in ten six. I think. Um, so it would have been close, but, you know, everyone loses some fish, kind of come to grips with it. It was a new rod. I was, that was, that was the stupidest part of it. I wish I had... Thanks, Matthew. My father, once again, yeah, he suggested I buy this chatterbait rod, which I'm sure it works fantastic for many people. I just, I should have practiced with it, and I didn't, so I kind of just didn't set the hook right. I don't know how I could have done it different, but... Um, yeah, I finished the last spot for money, so bubble least, boy. Yeah, twenty seventh, I think, twenty sixth, something like that. At mm. least you got to fish more than one spot. Yeah, yeah, you had an interesting day yourself, but it was a little more productive. Yes, absolutely, but only till about ten o'clock. So, my boater, we run over to our first spot and the night before and that day he was talking about maybe running around and trying some different stuff like running down south but we ran over to our first spot he put the troll motor down and didn't pick it up the rest of the day but it worked out i mean he pulled up it was low tide when we got to the spot and the eel grass was like right at the surface and he was just throwing a floating worm and he was just popping it over the grass and they were coming unglued for it it was awesome and i didn't have a frog or anything to throw in it I was, all i had top water i had was my popper and I was like, I can't throw this in this because the eel grass was like straight up to the surface. And then I put on a weightless fluke, like a green pumpkin fluke, and I think I caught like three fish, four fish, something like that. Started filling out the limit. The tide started coming in and the grass started to get covered and he picked up a swim jig and he started smoking them. Just crush them. And I started, I picked it up and started throwing it and I called up, called up, or I caught my limit. Then I started to call up. We got in this one little corner of the grass where the wind was blowing into it and it was he caught a fish like almost every cast and he turned the boat and i started throwing over there um i think i called twice when we did that or something like that all on the swim jig and then i hooked into a fish that i couldn't move and he popped off and it it definitely felt like the biggest fish that i had on all day i mean who knows if i had it hooked weird or not but i never i never got to see it and then Probably 20 minutes later, we go back down the grass bed and I made a cast. And as soon as I picked up on my swim jig, it was running off to the side and I set the hook. Fish comes back to the boat, jumps, and it was like a two and a half to two and three quarter. I mean, it was a good fish and he popped and that would have helped me probably a half a pound, three quarters of a pound. And then I made the same exact cast and I caught I caught my biggest fish on the same cast. Did the same exact thing I threw in there and as soon as I picked up on it, it was swimming off and I hooked the fish. But, and I called one more time shortly after that in like a little different section of the grass patch. But I ended up with 12-4, I think was my final weight and I finished in seventh, so. Top 10 in the books. 
good. And now Alex is sitting in ninth in the points, and I'm in seventh in the points. So we will be making the trek down to Kerr. Yeah, that's uh, that'll, I'm not. that'll yeah, <laughs> that's we know. We would have had fun. We're doing some. Uh, I think we're gonna camp on Saturday night. Th- this tournament's on a Sunday because it's a rescheduled tournament. So they're doing like the North Carolina division on Saturday and the Shenandoah on Sunday. But it'll be fun. You know, Kerr's a tough place. I mean, everybody. I think winning bags right now are twelve pounds out there for boaters. Um, so it's not an ideal fishery, but. Just got to get a couple fish, get some points, get through it. It's kind of one of those things you got to scrape through. Hopefully a boater knows the place and you can catch a limit and then you're really going to be looking good. So, Yeah, I mean, if you go ahead and catch two or three fish and the guys in the top of the leaderboard and the points don't catch anything, you're going to jump up a lot. So oh, I mean, that's, I, kind of, that's kind of the mindset for, for us going down is get – I mean, I would love to catch a limit, but if I catch three or four fish and have seven or eight pounds, I will be super stoked. <laughs> I I, I'll never forget on that stage when I weighed in the last time at Kerr, I had two, not squeaker fish, but two fish that were only an inch or two over the limit. And I was bummed. And I was probably in that halfway to slightly after the halfway point of the, of the weigh-in. And he goes, nice job today. You're probably going to cash a check. I, was, I looked at him, I was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? I have four pounds. Like, I ended up finishing, I think, five spots outside of making money. I was like, what the heck? This place. That's rough. Yeah. I mean, but it'll just be drop shots, shaky light, heads. Light line. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, that'd be cool if we could catch them on Saturday. Um, we're going to go out practicing on your buddy's boat. One of my buddy's boat, and we're going to pretty much, I mean, he knows the lake relatively well, but... I mean, I'll, for us as co-anglers, I I would love to just have free reign practice day and not tag along with a boater who's got another game plan. Like I'd rather go to a lake with my game plan and see if it works, and then well, we can run a bunch run of different stuff just too. Mess, mess around and have a good time. I mean, I mean, I know what was one at Kerr two years ago was um, it was a, a weightless senko up under willow trees up in dirty water, right? Folds, you were there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. But me and you both. I caught one fish on a scrounger, one fish on a shaky head. You caught three, and you placed. You you were like top twenty. Yeah, I think I was like nineteenth. Yeah, with with three drop shot fish, right? Mm-hmm. All and off one all spot. The same spot. In yeah. like thirty feet of water. And it was at the, the end of, of the day too, right? Yeah. It was like the last couple hours. Yeah. So we'll we'll probably try a bunch of different things. I heard Carolina rigs work well there. I actually got some. Some we talked to somebody today and said hair jigs and spoons actually work well there. I tried the hair jig last time we were there. I would. I'm bringing that. Yeah. Because if we got free reign, just yeah. try random stuff. It's cool to go fish a new fishery. Um, but yeah. Should be a good weekend. So, Matt, what did you do these past two weeks? You've been away. I was. I was gone for a little bit. I actually went up to Deep Creek Lake, which is in western Maryland, for a week with a girlfriend and a couple friends. I fished four out of the seven days we were there, five out of the seven days. We showed up on, like, a Saturday and we came across one of the main lake bridges actually we should yeah saturday and it was insane out there the boat traffic was unreal oh, i was like there's no way i'm gonna go out and try to fish in this uh, i might have been able to get out on like sunday morning for a couple hours but i'm almost glad i didn't because i went out monday through friday and monday morning by 7 30 there was like four wake boats in the creek i was fishing and then the jet skis came out by eight and it was just like that all day long. But it was a really cool lake. The water's really clean, really cool grass. It's actually called uh, Big Leafed Pondweed. Is it the same grass that's in Sleater? I don't think so, because I don't think I'd ever seen it before. But was very it deep sa- and th- came all the way to the surface? Oh yeah. So I think that was just that was pondweed. Only- okay. But this is like Big Leafed pond- Pondweed. It was, the leaves on it were Huge. Oh yeah, that's definitely not. I was like, I have never seen this stuff. Before. Almost cool. looks like what you put in an aquarium. Exactly like what you put in an aquarium. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It was awesome. I was really, uh, really stoked on that. So that's the way to do it, though. Go out real early every morning, and then yeah. come back at ten when everybody else is waking up, and it's pretty much what I did. Take a nap or do whatever you want. The rest storming of the day. like every afternoon too. So by noon, I was trying to get off the water, yes, but I was out there like we, six. It was yeah. a cool place, though. I mean, if and the bears. Oh yeah, yeah. I have a pretty cool bear story. 
the uh, Dog Bears. Dog Bears. Dog Bears. We'll say on like, so we got there Saturday, Tuesday morning when I woke up to go fish. <coughs> I, I left the house at like 5.45, 5.30, it was still dark. And it had like a horseshoe driveway around the house. And I had the van parked on the left side. And I hop in, start driving away, like go around the house and then get out to the main road. And I'm going out towards the highway. And I see our trash is just like all over the street, just gravel road, whatever. And I was like, damn, I wonder if that was bears. In my mind, I'm like, could have been raccoons, could have been, you know, something else, who knows. I'll clean it up when I get back because it's too dark for me to get out and do this right now. I don't know. If it were bears, like, I don't want to mess with them. So get back. Everybody I was staying with cleaned it up. I told them I saw it earlier that morning. And 13 hours later, I'm out there at night grabbing something from the van, pitch black. And I walk out and I tell myself, like, man, it's, it's pretty dark out here. I should probably bring, like, a headlamp or something or, like, use a, a light, a gun. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, whatever, it's cool. So I go to the driver's side of the van. I grab some camera gear out. I close the door. And I look over towards the trash can, which is probably 30 or 20 yards away. And I see the trash is again laid across the street. And I was like, holy crap. Like, let me go take a look like real quick, see if there's anything there. And I see two sets of little eyes. So I thought it was raccoons. Run inside and I'm like, guys, I figured out what it is. It's, uh, it's a bunch of raccoons. They're out there right now. So we all go out on the deck <laughs> and we're looking down at it. And it's super dark because it's further than the lights on the house could really reach but you could still see silhouettes and i was looking at two bear cubs and then you see mama in the trash can like well head in the trash can it was so big that it could fit in there i mean it was i would say like one and a half times a normal black trash can it was huge biggest black granted i've only seen three black bear in my life but giant black bear dude that's when it gets dangerous too yeah we were so that, lucky i know i almost walked sick down to you were like too. come on guys there's some raccoons out here and yeah you bring everybody into a squad well, of no. bears one of the girls <laughs> we were the hell, dude? the girl was like she goes matt those aren't raccoons that is a giant bear and i was like no they're not look at their little eyes like those are raccoons <laughs> are you i mean i was a little look tipsy too at this point i was like are you kidding me those are raccoons you brought us into a bear den she's like moron. no that's a giant black bear and i was like Oh, damn, you're right. That is a giant black bear. I almost walked down there. And we almost let Moose out, which is our dog. Uh, when I was going out, I'm, I mean, Priscilla was telling me she was almost just like, Matt, let Moose out one more time before we go to bed. And that would have been bad because he definitely would have gone down there and tore him up. I was going to say, I've, <laughs> For I've the seen, bears, I've seen videos of big bears and like getting scared off by like tiny dogs yeah. just chasing after him and barking. And that would have been Moose for sure. Absolutely. Rocky would have tried to play with it. I think, he got his face yeah. ripped off. <laughs> yeah. Not this understood good, why. Though. He would have been like, dude, what? He gets, he gets welcomed dude, into the tribe. <laughs> yeah, or, the, or he gets adopted. The cubs love him. They're like, can we keep him, Mom? He's like, all right, fine. You try to get Rocky back, you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah, one or the other. He's either going down hard or he's one of theirs. Yeah. So Deep Creek was awesome. If you guys have never been up there, check it out. It's a cool lake. Didn't catch anything crazy. Caught some small mouth, large mouth, and a couple of pickerel. Actually, no, I'm sorry, a couple of walleye. Uh, nothing too big, but it was a fun place. Then after that, went down to the beach for like uh, four days. Ace's birthday. Tough life you live, huh? Hey, man, right. it's a lot of driving. It's a lot of driving. <laughs> but yeah, it was sure. good. But now I'm back. I'm not going anywhere for a while. I'm ready to fish. I'm actually going to OBX next week, or two weeks. Where are you going? Uh, Corolla. Oh, nice. It's like four miles, or five miles from the... Uh, a drive on beach. I wish Ace was here so he could talk about his tuna trip because he caught like six pretty decent sized tuna. I still have not tasted about that. Um, your drone cast. Oh rig. yeah, that was pretty cool. So we were fishing off the beach and we really wanted to try and catch a shark and one of the best ways to do that is get either a kayak and kayak your bait out like, you know, four or five hundred yards. We didn't have a kayak but I had the drone so we created this contraption with a fork where we basically bent it beneath the propellers, uh, bent one of the prongs up so we could put the swivel over top of it and flew the drone out probably 300 yards and like I just fly it out as far as I could or until Ace was almost out of line and then turn it around, Ace would pick up some of the slack and I would just tilt it down and it worked flawlessly every time. It was so That's sick. Pretty and impressive. we're flying out like full 
13, 14 inch sea mullet. Oh my god. <laughs> you catch was, any? No, we had one, we really only had one true day to do it. We spent eight hours out on the beach. During the day too, we should have done it at night, but. Was the beach crowded? Either. Like we're. Oh yeah, it was crowded. Oh, and you just. <laughs> no, I didn't we're gonna. I was we're like, like, we're going shark hunting. Yeah, we're yeah. Shark hunting. You're going we shark have, territory we that We have far. one day to catch a shark. We're we're doing it. We don't care. That's so, uh, one takedown, and it was at like the end of that eight hour stretch, and it was the last fly out. We were like feeling good about this one, and fifteen minutes later, like rod just goes down real hard. Ace runs up to the rod. Pops the bale open, is like letting it run, and it drops it. I'm like, dang. Picks it back up again. You see the line going, line going. Rod goes down, he's about to set the hook, and he just drops it again, doesn't come back. But it was a really cool, and I definitely want to go do that. I plan on doing I would that love to do pretty that. much every night, just going out <laughs> yeah. after six and casting something out. That's the time to, to do something. it. Steven Thompson is the shark slayer. Dude, I texted him. I was like, "What? Are, give me some tips. Like, you... Dude. He, he was just rushed to that. He was probably just casting too, right? Yeah. yeah. He's literally just casting. I mean, it was. He wrecked them. It's insane. They caught like, I don't know if it was like over 10 each day, but they were in the high single digits every single day. And they were big too. Like, yeah, he had a he couple said, of real he caught big. caught two that were over sand, six feet. Are they sand tiger sharks? Think, Is that what they were? They were some kind of reef shark. I don't okay. Know. It was cool. Did you have to use live bait for shark? Mm -hmm. You just cut I think, the, I think the, bait. yeah, cut bait, the dead stuff might be better. I, I kind of think of them as like catfish in a way. Yeah. They just kind of yeah. scrounge around. I mean, I'm, obviously they eat stuff that's alive and chase your fish back to the boat, but I feel like if you're just uh, like shore fishing, surf fishing, just throw something that's dead out there and catch that or a stingray. Yeah, exactly. Big old skate. Uh, but Ace did mention something we should do is do like a bite charter. All of us just like yeah. Throw down for like either a tuna trip or like Stripe, marlin or something. Stripers. Striper would be fun too. You know, on the uh, loosen up that Brian Schmidt runs. It'd be cool. Don't you I know think Brian that Schmidt? would be a great idea. I think Wait, do you the know Brian uh, Schmidt? listeners would you enjoy that podcast. podcast. Do you know Brian Schmidt? Yeah. Hmm. Do you know Brian Schmidt? I'll shoot him a text. Probably won't respond. But <laughs> well, new number. He is. You were look, four you were years ago. That, if you were to look at that text message thread that you've texted Brian Schmidt, it would probably be. 17 unread messages. <laughs> it's all one-sided. They're all blue. <laughs> They're all fucking Do you remember me? It's like, dude, do you remember me? You took yo, me out Yo, B, guy. what's up? It's T-Money. <laughs> <laughs> no, his, his nickname's Juice. So, yeah, that's just like eight of those. <laughs> for like three just years. Just juice, exclamation point. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy birthday. <laughs> uh, I generally don't think I've talked to him in... Oh, we know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know. All right, I guess I won't text him. <laughs> no, do it, dude. It sounds like we got a shot. <laughs> today, let's talk about today a little mm. bit. Dude, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, got a little bit. Can do it. Talk about Sunday. So we can talk about keeping these fish alive that we yes. kept in our live wells all day today and Sunday and. Every other turn of yeah. the day. I think all of us, I, we have talked about a little bit before just fishing in tournaments and sorry boys, and just banging on microphones and stuff. Um, <laughs> Dick Lunar Pickles. How well, what, what, what you're saying, I guess the, keeping your fish alive, especially in the summertime. Like, well, it's, yes. it's more imperative to us because unlike most tournaments, we cannot weigh in a dead fish. Yeah. So, but still, fish can, I mean, it should still be top priority. Like, like, there's no reason to just not, if you're you're fishing an eight-hour tournament, run your battery. Just run your battery. Keep the keep the live well going. Like, do Ooh. everything in That's your a, power just in to just keep the now? fish alive. Like, not so how it's terrible when we get into these weigh-ins with eighty thousand dollar bass boats, and there's a pile of dead four pounds. So they've got two hundred quart coolers sitting next to the. Um, the tank where you dump your fish at FLW, I bet you those were full of dead bass. Because they don't throw them back in the water or anything. They just throw them in a cooler and they, I don't know if they eat them or anything or what, what FLW does with them or they just take them to like a, an off site and dump them. But I mean, there's yard. literally two 100 quart coolers that sit next to the dump tank at all FLW tournaments. Do you guys think that you shouldn't be allowed to weigh in a dead Absolutely. fish? Absolutely. I do so too. For every there tournament. There was an interesting point, and I, uh, I was watching a David Dudley 
uh, video, and it actually was just this week, and he was talking about, it ha happened to him at the Super Tournament um, on Chickamauga, whatever, last weekend, two weeks from when you're hearing this, uh, where he hooked a fish in the tongue, and he literally said, this fish is going to die, and it was like a five-pounder, and there's nothing that he could have done. There was no way to revive the fish. If you let the fish go, it was going to die regardless, and so... Just that one instance is the only time you're like, mm, it is kind of tough to say, well, you get, you can't. So the other thing is, I, I think I was up doing something when you guys were talking about this, but um, I'm pretty sure those fish that are dead at FLW tournaments, they just donate to like some sort of food. Yeah, I would, supply. wouldn't be surprised. Like, Definitely, they wouldn't waste. So That's your fish just the fact, sandwich from McDonald's. Exactly, right? but <laughs> just the fact that if, if you don't allow to... To weigh in dead fish, like we don't, that's going to encourage those anglers to but inevitably fish are going to die. Period. And the story, it's going to happen to everyone occasionally. Um, but those fish that are dead, some of those anglers that that have that happen to them are just going to throw that fish back. And I mean, it's going to be food for the turtles or whatever. But at least, you're not supposed to call a dead fish. Yeah. No, exactly. But people are going to do it. Mm -hmm. And at least this way, you can bring it back and have it be used for food for somebody else that needs it. And it, it's yeah. I mean, it's a cycle of life. Yeah. It'll end up it's, washing on a bank and a no, coyote right. will eat you're it. Right. Right. I think it should be more of a deduction than a quarter of a pound, though. Yeah. A quarter of a pound is... We're not, sometimes nothing. it can be a lot, but it's really nothing that's in the long nothing. term. I mean, if you think about it, as far as the Fountainhead Club tournament goes, where if you have a dead fish, it's <sighs> zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had it could be a six pound. Tyler and I lost I'm the money funny. fish because I hooked him in the tongue. I, he, yeah. di he died. We came, couldn't weigh him in. It was like four and a half pounder. Yep. Couldn't and there's nothing you can do. That's the thing. But mm -hmm. I do like how Fountainhead. The rule is you have a dead fish, can't weigh it. I yeah. like it. I, I like it too, honestly. Uh, it, especially us being young. It like encourages this, fish care. It's teaching us fish exactly. care at a young age. Mm -hmm. like, For sure. And like these tournaments down the road when if. We got that would be amazing if we ever got to this point. But if we all fish at the top level of fishing in the elite series and stuff, like it's going to teach us to take care of our fish and not get a quarter pound deduction because in those top level events, that's when those and the fields are stacked hard. together. Well, no, it's, it's super easy. In a bath, so easy. You just dump the old water in and put new water in. I mean, yeah. That's literally all you have to do in a bass I, boat. Like, there's no excuse in a, in a bass boat to have it on recirc all day. That, I just I, and that's when we fish those tournaments out of a quiet, not to kind of shoot them down, but the the fact that we fished at three John boats and never out of I've probably fished a ten. I've never had a fish die, never. Oh, but every yeah. single night when 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 you see the bass boats come in, they weigh oh, in and fish. and there's a pile of dead fish, and it's just. It's just a, the it's Fourth a, of July was the worst one. Yeah, I'm like consider it. It was chomping at the bit to talk about that because there were probably 50. twenty fish. I thought it was like fifty. It, it was, we'll say it was twenty. Yeah, it was a lot. But all of them were they were big. These were all the biggest fish of the. It was the, like over th everyone was over three pounds, and, and there was a pile of twenty largemouth was, bass. It, there was forty five boats there. in this tournament, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we were the one John boat. Yeah, we were the, we're the only people with uh, all a live fish. You, you fished the Fourth of July tournament. Too. We just only had three fish. Yeah. Oh, okay. And but, <laughs> we didn't and have a limit. I think big. You couldn't keep big fish if it died. That's what it was. Was the yeah. thing. And big fish for this tournament was like a three and a half pounder because there was like ten four pounders that were all just dead. Yep. Like it just it it, it made zero sense to me. And in that tournament, I gut hooked two fish on a Cinco, and they were bleeding profusely, and both of them lived. Yep. You know, so what do you do when you do that? There's a couple different ways to do there's it. There's two different ways. If you have the live well full already, and there's catch and release in the live well in a decent amount, it'll clot the, clot the blood up if you get them in there quick enough. But the other way, if you want to see me actually do it, you go watch Matt's video that he's going to post later this week. Keep a bottle of Mountain Dew in the boat. And as soon as you get the fish in, you see he's bleeding. Before you even take like mess with the hook, Unscrew the Mountain Dew. Some people keep a can, but I just keep like the screw bottle one so you can keep it in the boat. But um, dump it in there immediately and it'll clot the blood up. And I mean, it's it's one of those things where you put it in the fish's mouth and you feel you like they'll they'll like twitch because it's clotting their blood and it hurts them. So, but uh, it 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 works immediately and they just stop bleeding. And then you take the hook out and throw them in the live well. Like, so 
me and Matt have spent probably like an hour of the tournament, two or three tournaments, trying to keep our fish alive because Absolutely. because you our, checked the fish today. Honest to God, I was like, folks, you must have like a psychological like. You must have been scarred at some point. We were scarred all last year. Every not, not all last year. Two, two, years, two, years, two years, ago, years ago, it was it's really like they're going to get a sunburn. Dude, I mean, it's, <laughs> you should you should hear me on the when we fish tournaments together. I'm like, can you fit, check the fish real quick? Like, Matt, when we fish a tournament, yeah. I was like, hey, you mind checking the yeah. fish real quick? Check the fish. Like, it's important yeah. to us because we can't weigh them in. And, I mean, it's our we, home body we, of water, and we like it when four-pounders swim away. That's don't true. Like Killing it. anything also for the, no reason. The yeah. other, the other tough part of that is, yeah, you want to check them and make sure they're good, but if one's on its side, what can you really do? Not much. Wait, there's really not much. The, okay, well, I guess you can add the, the only thing. To it. So Always have. You know what? Clips. Let's take two seconds. Run down how we keep our fish alive yeah, in right. alive wells every tournament. So first step, ice, ice. When, it, when the water gets over like 65, 70. Yes. Yep. Except when, the, yeah, when the day temperature is late yeah. in that 70s too. Just when they're, I would say that, that water temperature and when they go on beds. And not... If you're keeping fish, beds. spawning fish, you probably want to put a little bit of ice in there just to keep it cool. But What kind of ice are we using? And not bags of ice. Not, don't use the bags. If you, this you, happened on Sunday, yeah. I tried to freeze bottles and I froze them for 24 hours and they didn't freeze all the way. I don't know if they were just stuffed in my freezer the wrong way, like underneath some stuff and it just didn't freeze. But in a pinch, you can get a bag of ice, but you have to have catch and release because there's chlorine in the ice that you get just from the gas station. And the, the, um, the catch and release or the please release me, whatever additive you want to throw in your live well, it'll like dechlorinize it. I don't know if it's chlorine. It'll neutralize it. Yeah, it'll neutralize yeah. the chlorine and obviously the chlorine is not good for the bass. so. In a pinch is what I'll say with the with the bags of ice. I'd it, it'll, it, it'll yeah, it, it'll fine. it'll it'll work. But I would definitely say big bottles of water, big, big jugs of water, wherever you can find that's big, and you can put water on. Yeah. You just freeze it, and that's with lake water. Longer with with lake water that works too. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to do that, but yeah, um, like ours they last burst longer. today early. Yeah, remember? that's true. Uh, they last longer. They keep the water colder. Um, obviously you don't want to eat freezing because then it shocks them on the way in, but. Yeah, go from 90 to like 55. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, exactly. Like, oh. first, first and foremost, in the summer months, if you can only do one thing, ice. Absolutely. Period. Yep. Um, and we're all fishing out of John boats. None of us have built in live wells that we actually use. So we're using 100 quart coolers mm -hmm. and we'll fill them up whenever we catch that first fish of the day. And that water that we fill fill it up with is the water that is in there at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. At least for us. I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys. Some saying, people some people will change it out, but that's if I you really, don't have an aerator. I really don't release. think that. It, well, that's why. Yeah. Yes. If you have, if you're putting ice in there, and your water's cold, it's gonna stay cool all day, especially with the ice bottles. It's better just keep that in there. Then. So there's no reason to recirculate mm -hmm. it. You, you have to have an aerator about, though. There you, has oh, to you be have something to have an aerator. aerator that's the, the other thing we didn't Absolutely. talk about. Yeah, yeah it, you have to have I mean, an aerator in there. If you're trying to build your own live well, they're like thirty dollars on Amazon, and you can get a pretty decent one. I mean, I've had one. Oh yeah, the live well for two years now, the same one, and I mean, it works fine. I definitely. Oh, I've had one. To, oh, I've, wow, you've had some good luck. I've had to replace those things. Yeah, I mean, the, the clips, that, the suction cups are definitely falling off. I had to put screws through the plastic to keep it pointing down, so Fultz doesn't get sprayed in the face every time he checks <laughs> on them. Still doesn't work. That's why he asked me to check on them. He just wanted to see me get sprayed no, in the face with water. Because every time I turn around, you put a hook in the back of my head, and I don't want to come back there. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, um, so ice. Yes. Aerator. Catch and release. Catch and release. And please, then please release me. Wait, please release me. Yeah. With certain ones, like I know my please release me, which is like a green, dark green, granular substance. It's not the juice. It when you put that in there, the aerator hits it and it creates foam. So foam, a thick layer of foam, when you're using that aerator, it's not going to penetrate the water as well and oxygenate the water. The so aerator's I, not going to penetrate the water. I didn't really yeah, think about it like right. that. So that's why I use foam, foam off mm -hmm. as well. But like your G-Juice stuff, you don't ever have foam, do you? I, I use Please Release Me as well. Or oh, catch and release. That blue stuff? The green. I use the green stuff that you use. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, your your water liquid. was so blue today. No, that was the other. That case. was yeah, that, that was, was Jesse oh, and oh right, yeah. They they right. definitely had juju so or whatever it is. Juju source. I, I think it's rejuvenate. Rejuvenate. It's blue. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what well, color. Well, the rejuvenate, juju catch and release, and please release me are all like granular, like they're solid. And juju, I think they're all like a greenish turquoise. Yeah. All the ones that are solids, but the juju is actually blue. So. And it's I didn't liquid. Know that. Okay. Yes. Maybe yeah. that's what they had then. Yeah. But that's the most common thing. I mean. I would, yeah. I would assume. I don't I've know. Always, I've always used uh, Please Release Me yep. since so, I started fishing. In every, that, not, that, that doesn't even matter if it's summertime. I use it. Oh, when no matter a, what. If there's a fish on the live well, if they get Please Release So I, I don't know if this is the, they're using the same formula now or not, but I know there was a big debate whether Catch and Release or Please Release Me is better. Um, from what I've heard at least a few years ago, I, like I said, I don't know if they changed the formula at all, but... The difference and why pr we use Please Release Me and it's better is because it actually has like healing chemicals, like chemicals that will actually clot blood and, and keeps their slime coat, keeps slime the slime coat, coat yeah, and, big and heals like heals wounds. Where Catch and Release is just kind of de-stresses them, and um, I think it still does the slime coat thing, uh, but it doesn't have the the healing properties that Please Release Me does. Um, so that's. At least what, from what I've heard, I don't, who who knows, but like, that's that's what I've heard in testing and all that stuff. That's that's what they figured out. I it works. So. Yeah. I mean, we lose so few fish. I have had one fish die routine. last year. It's I've, I've had I one fish die in the last fish die. two, and it yeah. was only because I I got hooked it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You your live well has got a lot of space in it. I have a hundred and twenty quart. Yeah. I, and I, I definitely don't really ever fill it up with fish because I usually come in with like three or four. So. <laughs> sure. Um. No, but I definitely think having space in a live well helps a bunch. Mm -hmm. But um, I agree. You have to put something in a live well if you're going to put a fish in there. Please release me, added, catch and release, yeah. G juice, whatever you want. But something needs to go just, in there. Just the point we're trying to get across is take care of the fish. Like, yeah. There's so, no excuse for you not to spend ten dollars on a bottle of G juice or whatever, and just keep it in the boat. And like, just go above and beyond. And just get the two other things that I think yeah, really the, the the needle. I, which point. I don't have. We don't. Well, we don't have really... the opportunity to fish for fish that are gonna get need to get yeah. fizzed every time you catch. Well, one. we did. We did, uh, <clears throat> and we got it on. We did get a video of that. I didn't, that I was hot side Lake Anna. Wasn't that was it? the hot side of Lake I, Anna I in February video. or January, and I caught a fish out of like thirty five feet of water, and it was on its side um, by the time it came in. But that the fizzing is something that you want to definitely take the time to learn about before you do it. You can obviously do something. Do more harm than good. Yeah. If you, if you aren't, but well, hey, my first time it worked yeah, perfectly. Yeah, because I pulled up the video. Alex grabs his needle well, and he's was, about to stab this fish. There was I'm a like, little instructions. I there was, was like, a little instructions. Do not this fish until we get to watch a YouTube video on this. Yeah, but there's it works. two. There's two different ways to do it. You can poke them through the roof of the mouth and get to it, or you can poke them behind like, their right behind their. Fin. I think it's her. Where the side fins are. Yeah, whatever the side fin is called. Uh -huh. But like, you go back like an inch, and then you come at an angle. You pop it, and then it pops their air bladder, and they can swim down fine. The fish swim way great. Mm -hmm. So, also, I, I just want to revisit how like, if your fish is on its side, looking like it's dying, yeah. it's not because of being too deep. Fin clips. There's a few things that we do as well. It's fin clips first and foremost, um, which are basically just. Weights that you can clip to a couple like ounce two, weights. Two ounce weights. You can make them just, if you wanted to. Like yeah. they're, they're really easy to make. Or what me and Matt have done in the past when we don't ha didn't have fin clips and we were just kind of like trying to trying to salvage our big fish because I know this happened like two the first years. year we, we fished the tournament it was we had a twenty three pound bag and yeah. our four biggest fish died yeah because we had no idea what we were doing yeah um and it was an awful day it was Tyler, but, Tyler broke a two hundred. Seventy-five dollar rod. Yeah, but uh, so what what we've done is we'll put them in the net and just lay them over the side of the boat and let them get that other water, the fresh water that that is the lake water that they're in. And every time we've done that, and like we'll have the boat moving a little bit and just kind of revive them like you're about to release them in the net, um, and then we put them back in and they've they've survived until the end of the end of the mm, day for us. I've never at least. heard that. That's what, we've done that they'll, like twice. I think they'll live if they need to be fizzed. Like they're not gonna, they're not just gonna croak when as soon as 
it's it's a matter no, of them I wasn't being, talking about yeah, yeah. this, but I'm, oh, I guess like as, no, I was just as they're dying, dying. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 for sure. If they start to roll on their side, not because we had two fish today roll on their side. Yeah, we put the fin clips on. They were fine. They swam off perfectly at the end of the day. Yeah, they just One get so stressed out. Clip. How deep were they? Uh, actually, well, not York, that deep. I don't yeah. Think. No, I just think it was just no more than stressed. Feet. I don't. I mean, okay. fish. Sometimes you can literally catch a fish. Sometimes and you they just like die for so no full. reason. Yeah, I want to roll over cool. on my side when I'm feeling anxious. Our, our live well was pretty full too, so we we had because the problem when fish. you they, guys have a lot of fish when they roll over, they're not they're not actually passing water through. They're just kind of like they're just floating. I mean, I don't know if necessarily. The whole action with their fins when they're sitting in there is passing water through their gills or what what is the reasoning behind they're not dying because of something that you did to the fish if they roll over they're literally just kind of like either giving up i don't know what it is they're just stressed out so that fin clip you put it on their anal fin well it takes effort for them to to keep themselves up and this helps yeah they they don't have to because it's a two ounce weight it literally centers them it's like a you put it on their, their anal fin. Anal fin, yeah. The and anal fin? Right yeah. on the anus. The anal fin. Yeah, that one. The one right next to their bubble. <laughs> yeah. Now we've just gone too far. No, you went too far. Don't, <laughs> don't you bring me into this. But, yeah, I mean... You're perfect. You're ever since man. we kind of, me and Matt kind of figured it out with the uh, ice, uh, please release me, aerator on all day, and foam off. We haven't had a fish. I, yeah. I don't think we've had a fish die. The bottom line is that you just now, you've taken the time to learn about it. You've taken the, you know, you've gone the extra step to be prepared for it. And then during the tournament, you take the five total minutes out of the entire eight hour day just to take that extra little bit, just to make sure that Even those while fish you're running. Live. Yeah. You're just running. Just do, you just yeah. do it as soon as you fill the live up. It's one, one big step. You yeah. catch a fish, you grab the catch and release out. Put the fish in a live well, dump the catch and release on the, in the live well with the fish, and you fill it up. But, I mean, yeah, and the then, other uh, things, then, too. Yeah, I mean, there's know. a few other things, but, I mean, it is two simple simple steps at the beginning. You fill the live well and put catch and release in it, and then you throw some ice in it. Yeah. And, most and if you're like us, you keep the ice bottles in the cooler, and hopefully you catch fish before they melt. <laughs> we do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you're like, they oh, come man, in, hopefully they we come catch in a trash bag. O'clock. They come in a trash bag, and we're like, hopefully we catch them soon. Yep, exactly. I can fix, on a start mill. I can fix that this time. I got a cooler we can bring, so we're good to go. Yes. We'll do that, too. We'll, like, throw yeah. a couple of those ice bottles in a cooler just to yeah. keep them. Honestly, and, yeah. and throw them in throughout the day, too. That, like that it, helps. You know, but... One o'clock, you have an extra one, throw mm-hmm. it in there. Absolutely. I, keeps it cool. If you throw three or four in there, like, good-sized ones in the morning, though, it's usually good all day. That's the water's 32 do. degrees and yeah. ready to go. <laughs> yep. Those fish I mean, are frozen. But that water, when you get down 10 feet... 12, 15 feet where you're catching them in the summertime, most of the time. Yeah, but you're also filling the lava up with the water that's on the surface. It's I, actually 90 degrees. I know. So you want it to be cold. Yeah, like, you want it to be... Yeah, you're, you're right. But, so, um, Keep them chilly. Take care of your fish and don't kill them. Yeah. There you go. I mean, that's this is a sport that's meant to be... Especially the salvage, big ones. salvage for the next generation. And it's a growing sport. Too. Absolutely. I mean, especially with COVID. I mean... Anybody listening to this who's been into a tackle shop, it is empty. Dude, yeah. We could go on and on about how many people are at the parks now. Fish, I mean, there's... Jeez. But it's not just this. It's been growing over the last 10, 15 yeah. years. Yeah. And For it's, sure. And yeah. so it's... Those fish are seeing more and more and more pressure. It's not like their population levels are just growing because there's more fishermen. We just got to take care of the resource. You know, if we want to keep enjoying it. Because there's a lot of lakes out there that you can see what's happening to them. over here. Yeah, you. It's really, been a really rough day. It has been. You want to talk about it? No, I'm good. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so today, <laughs> I didn't know where you were going. Okay, there's a reason. Pretty pumped where this is going. There's What's the reason? reason? Like well, today was pretty good for me and Mr. Foltz, and uh, it was a lot of graphing, a lot of just kind of running around spots, not seeing anything, not fishing it, finding something that we wanted to see. You know, we liked what we saw and fished it. A lot of times we caught a fish, sometimes we didn't. Uh, but afterwards, me and Klusky fished from, what, 3 to? 3 to uh, 6. 3 to a little late. Um, <laughs> we, we got off the water at like 6.45. 6 and uh, we saw some of the most incredible. The mega school. I mean, it was the but in a school. couple spots, too. Yes. And it just, 
They weren't biting. One snagged fish on a spoon. And I hooked one on the shaky head. And then you snagged another one slightly. Just came back with a scale on the spoon. And it was a big one. It was. It looked. It didn't feel big when I, I felt him on there and he was swimming away as I snagged him with a two up treble hook. But I didn't notice until like two casts later, but a scale came back that was like the size of a quarter. Yeah, half dollar. But I mean, the marks that we're seeing, we were seeing on the spot, it was, there was absolutely no reason that they shouldn't have bit one of the eight baits that we threw in there. Yeah, we, we cycled through everything. I mean, I had nine rods, or I had seven rods. The only thing we didn't throw, and I wish we threw, was, was a crankbait. Yep. But still, I mean, I don't They know should if... have bit something. I mean, the football jig has been on. I threw that in there probably 10 times, got snagged about four of the 10 casts. More like eight. Yeah, it was, I, I've never been snagged so many times in my life. It was like, I wanted to, I, I, I'm lucky I didn't get snagged with the ecstasy. I probably would have broken under my name. <laughs> Speaking of broken rods. Oh, it's at my house. Sorry. What happened? I boat flipped a fish and the old 734 decided to give out on me. It was Billy's. <laughs> <laughs> the important part of that story. It was Billy's rod. It was Billy's rod. I texted him. I was like, I'm so sorry, bro. But uh, something happened. <laughs> it's okay. Dobbins right. has an awesome warranty. And it's like 40, 50 bucks. It's not bad. $50 boat flip. So yeah. $50 boat flip. <laughs> so I guess even though those fish today didn't work out very well, what... What's like the process you go through to to try and catch a fish that you see on your graph, but you're throwing everything you have tied on? Like, do you change change the lures you're throwing? I wish I wish I would have changed the lure. I brought three rods with me. I mean, I had and just in one, general, one maybe not today, plastic, but, like, but I mean, yeah, change the baits up. Definitely change your. Um, I think the angle of the cast is a big thing. That's something we didn't really. We did it on that spot. I mean, yeah, we, we definitely we definitely all four angles. Yeah, you're right. We definitely we definitely rotated, and we were going casting with the wind. We cast it against the wind. I mean, we threw it in there, but I mean, there's I, so many different things you can do if you're trying to get a group of fish to bite. You can change color. You can change weight on the bait that you're throwing. You can change the bait. You can change the line size presentation. I think that's what we didn't do. I mean, I was you doing caught that everything. one fish dead stick in it, dead stick in it, and I that wind. Stick. But that wind was it was howling uh, across that that area and I know for for me personally I, I didn't really I was continuing to do a lot of summertime movements where I was moving baits giving it Working imparting it. action on it and uh you I did say it I, mean, I slowed down scrounge football jig I started dragging it I just but like a shaky head just or or a drop shot like I didn't have that tied on you didn't catch a fish on a drop shot today did you no and I he said it he was like where the fuck did this bite go Dude, he, Dude, he threw it a lot. I did. Drop shot? Mm-hmm. I caught a fish on a drop shot today. <laughs> was it a crappie? No, it was a bass. Was it a big one? Two pounds. Ooh, it's a keeper. What color were you throwing? Can't tell you. Secret. Super secret. Actually, I don't even know the name of it. It was a robo worm. It was like Big white. Boy. We'll call it uh, like pearl, top mm. and bottom, and then the middle of it was purple. Mm. Or like a purple prism shad. Prism shad. Yep. Oh, <laughs> it might have been prism shad. Yeah. Yeah. Prism shad. Yeah. It was definitely aces that just ended up my boat. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, this looks boogie. good. Thanks, Boogie. These are such a But yeah, boy. that's, uh, I had a bunch of bites on it too. I had bites on it and they just didn't want it. And the other day I was out there and whacked them on it. So one of the crazy things, not crazy, but one of the cool things that happened today was um, I was fishing a Kai Tech. Alex was fishing a scrounger, and I'm telling you, dude, that Kai Tech got bit so much today, and I only caught one fish, two fish on it. One was a crappie. Today. Oh, three, no, three I, fish guess, on I guess you did. Yeah, you did catch yeah. the second one. Yeah. Biggest fish of the day for me was on a Kai Tech. Yeah. But I think it could have been anything. No, I mean, I got I got dude. so many bites on it. It's that just... fish just I'm, was hungry. I Six bites on, on a Kai Tech. One cast. On a scrounger. Oh my god! Are Today? you serious? Yes. Oh, that one. Dude, yes. yeah, okay. it happened twice. Did you set every time? No, I just kept. I just kept reeling. You don't. Set oh, it was like the little scrounger. A little, it was bullshit. Pop, pop, pop. You I said smoke you, Yes, I literally <laughs> yeah, you smoke them. The only thing I don't today. smoke is crankbait. If I'm, if I'm fishing a crankbait, anything really? else, it's getting the yeah, business. Yeah, scrounger, spinnerbait, chatterbait. Why fish? I just well. I why second, fish I second that notion, but that's you're why also not going to catch much. You just like reeling. I fish to set the hook. 
I Yo. jacked that one. Oh. We were fishing. I, wish, <laughs> I told him about it today. I was like, wait until you I, watch the dude, video. It was so cool. This fish smoked it. Boom. Set the hook. Miss. Nothing. I just let it. I didn't even touch the reel. I just let the line go slack and I let it fall. And I'm letting it fall. It catches up. Get some tension. Penduluming a little bit. Boop. It was so cool. I, I love mean, that it is a single line. hook. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. a jig. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a single hook, so I'm not worried about it. I look at it like a chatterbait. You're just going to blow their mouth open, in a way. I mean, I I've just, I just, just, I just, I just keep bait. reeling just because I'm not, the, when they eat that thing, if they're on it, it's down in their crushers. And that's why I just keep reeling, and then you put, when you feel them on there, you just, then you give them some to the side, but you, you send it. Billy, can you not I send those not. pictures of those, the, the baits in those fish's mouth from last week? Definitely. Oh my gosh. Like, when I say down there crushers, that's an understatement. Like, the hook, pretty much they swallowed the hook, and when I set it, it came up under the, like, above the crushers. Wow. And I didn't give them time to eat it. I literally felt them, loaded up, set. It was just down their gullet. But what I was getting at was today, I was throwing the swim bait, Alex was throwing the scrounger, and, uh, I also caught four fish on the scrounger, so yeah. I know he caught a lot more bites, but I caught yeah no I caught two fish on the on the kayak. We were fishing this one spot, and I was just straight retrieving it because that's that's what I like to do with a with a um so swim bait or scrounger. That's what you're supposed to do like I like to straight retrieve it, maybe a little twitches here and there, and then I wasn't getting bit, but Alex was catching fish behind me, in front of me, all over the place. Um, Probably got what four, three before I got bit, and four. finally I switched what he was doing. He was he was fishing a scrounger like, I'm not sure if you want me to tell you tell people this, but he was fishing a scrounger like a Texas rig, like it wasn't on the bottom or anything, but he was casting out there, letting it sink to the depth that he wanted it to be at, and then literally just it was like he was dragging it on the bottom and then reeling and up the slack and dragging it on the bottom yeah, again. Yeah, so we we'll, we'll, we're fishing for suspended fish with that yep. bait that, in that certain area. And it works on, on a lot of different areas. It doesn't have to be 50 feet of water. It could be 10 feet of water. But my mindset behind that is, it's first of all, it's running up. It go, when I'm pulling it up, like the Texas rig, you know, yo-yo kind of mentality, it's scurrying up and then it dropping straight down. Straight it's almost making up. these like Zs. If you, if you think about it in the water, it's probably not exactly like that, but so it's, running away from the fish and then all of a sudden it's kind of like dying and the fish every, I, I don't remember it's probably never happened uh, they always eat it as soon as it gets to the crest and just starts to fall as soon as it starts to fall that's when they hit it because they're probably falling it up and then they eat it when they see it falling down but the other benefit to doing that is that if I think the fish are in 15 feet of water I can't 100% of the time, every time, put my bait in 15 feet of water. I can get it close, but that yo-yo technique brings it up two or three feet, and then I let it fall three or four or five feet, and then it's covering five feet of the water column, and on our lake where it's, today it's pretty clean. It was probably four feet of visibility, three, four feet. I was feet. about that, yeah. So that, to me, is like, I mean, they, they have a better perception under the water than we do, but, you know, the still it's not clean clean they can they're not f seeing a bait 30 feet 40 feet away and going oh i'm going to eat that they're okay that i feel something around me okay oh i see something and then they go and investigate but um yeah that that technique has definitely helped on a few different sometimes they don't eat it like that sometimes they want that just that straight retrieving for the most part this year the kai tech it's Dude, just it's been, been slow kai roll, kai tech's been the money. whether you're doing it in the middle of the water column or on the bottom um, but basically, the moral of the story was, next cast, I'm like, all right, Alex, I'm, I'm going to do this cast like you've been fishing it. Three drags in, three pounder. Yep. And what did you say? What did you say after that? No, what did so, he say before that? Said, look no, it was you, after look that. Look at you, Alex, that? figuring stuff out. And then I said, you're <laughs> an asshole. <laughs> yes, I am. He's, he thinks he's so much better at everything. I don't know. Let's get him a freaking John boat and see what he does. No, he needs to buy himself a John boat. I like the first that. idea. <laughs> Not for you guys to get me a John boat. Yeah, you, you need to get your own John boat. I have my own John boat. It's yeah. just under somebody else's name. <laughs> Matt McCleskey. <laughs> so you don't have a John boat. 
No, I'm not getting a jumbo. I'm getting a real boat. Why would big, you? Big boat. Yeah, why would I? Muchasaurus Rex over there. I have a bunch of great. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bunch of great friends that let me use their boats. Hey man, yeah, nice hey man. they're all real. He happy bought you a new it. battery, I know, right? I probably put which like you killed five six hundred bucks in the boat. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's I would fair. Say that. But how much have you guys won? More well, than that. A little bit more than that. You won more than that. <laughs> <laughs> a good amount more than yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, five so times that. It's fine. Five times? Not, not five know. times that. In the past two years we've had it? I would say. Mm. No. Yeah. You won three grand? Five times what? The 500? Six. I was just saying five times, 500. Yeah, we kind of that. I guess you 500 had... bucks. I mean, maybe. I'd say it's close to that for it's the last good. two but years. To combine, not splitting it. Yeah, combined. Maybe. I don't know. Who That's cares? Real Who cares? It's a fountainhead basketball yeah. tournament. We win two hundred dollars. Unless you win the classic. Hey, hey, I forget even how much we won. I think, I think it's like it was... seventeen hundred bucks for first place, and you yeah. both split. You split it, so it's like eight fifty a piece. Yeah. Which I mean, that's good, but that's cool. That's it's bragging. Right? It's it, it's not. I mean, dude, think about how much money we spend to fish them. Well, if you think about just the tournament entry fees, it's not much because. 30, 40 bucks no, no, no. Per, that's, per person. That's nothing. But the, the, the baits and all that stuff, is that what you're talking about? Oh, the time, I just mean the, the, gas? the time. Well, time alone, not worth my time in the Dude. sense of money. No. Like, I don't fish it for money. Absolutely not. Nobody for the, does. Okay, we have how many regular season tournaments? 14. 14, 14 times what? You're looking at 16 <laughs> hours out of your day? 14 hours out of your day? Mm -hmm. From when you leave your house to when you get home? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you divide that by 150 bucks. I mean, you're making like 10 bucks an hour if you win the turn or get second if you cash. That's for one tournament. That's just one. That's just one. I'm we spend a lot it. of money on gas driving here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, gas. I mean, I wouldn't baits. change it for the world though. That no, I, so that's the fun. thing. I wouldn't either. I mean, I the podcast, you know, it's like starting to eat into my time yeah you know? so if you guys are looking into we... sponsorships uh we're looking for donations uh we need to set up a gofundme there we go <laughs> patreon what's it for the just, bite just, just the bite <laughs> just because we're complaining <laughs> <laughs> billy bates you've been too quiet over there what you got going on? i don't fish tournaments i don't got nothing to contribute i don't i'll How, probably how'd you do today i caught two. Oh, he did his he cut, he, he, cut the, he cut the cold fish. No, no today. live fish. I did catch a, um, a dark sleeper fish. Uh, oh, nice. Today? Yeah, in the Sweet. Bubs. That's awesome. And the 10 inch jelly worm. Man's jelly you worm. You caught one on the 10 incher? No. In the pile? Uh, no, just off a point. That's Deep, pretty cool. Just soaking it. Was it a big, was that your cold fish? Uh, well, was like the two and a half. The, sleeper the real fish was, was the sleeper fish for yeah. sure. Yeah. That was in the that bubs. Was a deep fish. Yeah smoked it that's awesome awful. dude awesome. well thinking. the crazy thing was we pull up he already he like had just tied on a dark sleeper and i was like damn that is such a good <laughs> idea i've never thrown that in the bubbles and then he throws it in first cast gets obliterated i throw behind him with the kite tech i get smoked miss the fish he throws in over top of me catches it yeah don't, i mean i don't think it was the same fish no nah, i think it was just there competing for it i so. just think that you found the but the dude the dark sleeper where you throwing the three quarter ounce the small one i don't think it's, you're half. throwing the baby it might have been the half it's the one i have over there I, they have a half and they have a quarter as well right it's yeah it wasn't the super small one that ace throws it's like the that, the half. that one yeah i think that's a half they make but, it up to a three quarter dude, but who knows that thing was in the back of the fish's mouth yeah oh, you, you sure. couldn't see it oh my gosh you need to that hook is not okay I mean, what's wrong with that? <laughs> that one's probably mine. And is that's it rusted? Doing. That's no, the, it's that's, that's, that's the one you shake, you shake them off. Hey, hey. Oh, weird. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> it's that's why you're missing fish. Pointing the wrong way. I don't even know if I've used that one in a long time. It, it doesn't have an eye. That's a good idea, though. I, I, I was talking about it the all cool winter, too, throwing that out on the points. As soon as I saw I'm bringing it, it to Kerr. Dude, for sure. It's, it's going to get crushed. The cool thing about them, especially in deep water, is they're small, but they'll sink quick. They will so you go don't down have to quick. sit there and wait. You could throw that thing, if you're going down at 18, 20 feet, it'll be there in five seconds, and then you can just bring it back up. Instead of throwing, you know, if you're throwing like a Kai Tech on like a 
quarter ounce weight or something. You I just have. feel like the yeah, it takes that thing just is like a bullet, dude. Straight to the bottom. I will say yeah. that that's probably a similar size to like a two point eight or three point three Kytec. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And if you throw it on that like eighth ounce, quarter ounce guppy heads, they go down. They go down pretty quick. They go down. Nice. It, it sings, it, it's nice because you can fish it like a jig too. Mm -hmm. And you can pop them. You can get them to do all sorts of like jerky movements and stuff, and they'll stay true. It's cool bait. I'm glad you thought about that because I really want to fish that for smallmouth in like a river. Or something. Oh, dude, smallmouth crush those from what I understand. We should we'll definitely do that camping trip on the Shenandoah. Well, when we were talking about fishing today. We didn't know we were gonna go fish the reservoir. I was almost gonna say to you, Paul, so we should go like wade the Rappahannock or dude or upper, I was this close Potomac. to telling you to do that uh, we should do that on the Shenandoah he texted Next me day, he was oh, like I'm thinking about I'm thinking about going out to Shenandoah and just wading by myself today after work I'm I'm dude I'm, kayak trip let's I'm go taking my no own not even kayak right just wade no, I mean if oh, we're really? gonna no, if we're gonna nice. camp we need oh kayaks. no no I wasn't talking I heard about it's that it's a yeah. self-guided no. tour out there or something different. like that oh is that is that what they're doing I thought that's what I heard on the radio the other day I know they're open yeah and that'd be cool but I'm so down to do that, bring like a topwater rod and, and then a rod to throw that and like a Ned rig or something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's I think that would be the bike very, camping trip. Bike camping yeah. trip. Yeah, Shenandoah. There's a bunch of places to fish on the or to camp on the Shenandoah. Take like a few miles float. Or we can go down or? we can go down the new river and catch some hog smallmouth and some musky. Yeah. yeah. I need to find a portable air air conditioning unit. <laughs> you know, like, it's too hot. I can't get it off. It's like melting to my skin. <laughs> Sounds horrible. Awful. That was the first thing I thought. I was like, could you imagine? What if it a malfunction on that thing? But yeah, no. Once once fall degrees. comes, like September, we should definitely do a camping trip. We can go down to the new. It's only like four four hours away. Spend the weekend down there. Catch giant smallmouth. And is like an hour away. Yeah, it doesn't have as big smallmouth. It's fine. Man. Or musky. I'm just, going, I'm just going for the camaraderie, bro. Just hang out with my I'm friends. I'm trying to break my PB, right. but I'm just trying to hang out. All right, I'm fine. Just trying to drink some beers. And fine, we can go to the guns. city city like, river. Can we, can we shoot some guns? Yeah, we can shoot guns off my patio right now if you want. Oh, it's frowned upon. Unfortunately, tell me you're lighting fireworks. Yeah, that's what it is. You can't see them because they're too fast. <laughs> pew pew pew. No, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what? what so um, let's um. T you saw it first. So, go so ahead. I mean, just to set the stage, we're driving. We're heading back to the ramp to go come here, and driving on the boat. On the boat, and so Matt's actually operating the motor. I'm sitting on the front deck, facing backwards, and just out of. I mean, there's clouds everywhere. There's no. There was no clouds. There was some clouds. There was all right. Clouds. Clouds. Or no clouds, clouds. clouds, boys. All day long, there's been clouds. So this is why it's you not like I was on the boat. looking up. GoPro may have man. The GoPro may have, may have seen it right when it went right over top of us. But still, would have been. Cool. I looked up. Was just staring at the sky, and Matt started to notice before I said, "What the f is that?" And I just pointed, and he looked up. And immediately turned the motor from full throttle down to nothing, spun the boat around, and we both just stared at this thing. It disappeared within. It was ten seconds. Ten seconds. Did you watch it leave, or did you just? I watched it so literally the entire time. Mm, I could and see he it. has fantastic eyes. I don't have great eyes, but when it when I saw it above my head, I literally was thinking, I was like, that's a floating balloon, just like. And then I looked at the shape of it, and I was like. That has wings. And then all of a sudden it started to get smaller. Like quickly. Like, because it was decent size. It was going in the exact opposite direction that we were going. But we stopped but the we, boat. But we stopped. And, and it, it went straight over top of us. It was... It was not near us. I'm not going to say it was like... It's not like a drone that was 400 feet above the water. It was, I would say, a good half mile up i mean it was it was lower than a commercial like oh absolutely plane it, yeah. was flying mm -hmm. but i mean as close as it was the fact that we couldn't see it that well like i mean i knew it had like, a, you could see the shape it was it almost looked reflective yeah like, it had a reflective ear like translucent yes. almost it was just a very weird very weird uh Instant. I mean, Y'all are going to so I mean, much I, for I, thinking this, but it, I have never seen anything like never, this. Never. It, it was, 
it went straight over top of us. Like Alex said, he was looking at it and he he just mouthed what the what the f. And I, I kind of noticed him looking at something before he even said anything. And I turned around, stopped the motor, looked at it. And like he said, I have really good eyes and I stared at it. I mean, I was watching it the whole time for like the 10 to 15 seconds that we could see it. And it was slowly going away from us. It looked like it was slowly going away from us like an airplane does as it's flying away. And it just keeps going and going. And it wasn't following the horizon like an airplane would. And it just kind of stays in sight until it goes yeah, over. It the went go up. This thing went up. Not straight up, but it went at like an. But that was like an was, angle it was, for us. It, it was ascending, but it was, it it never like an airplane. Even when it's ascending, you're gonna see it. And this thing in ten to fifteen seconds was completely gone. It was. It, yeah. I, it, I, I I don't obviously we're not trying to say the it was definitely a UFO, but I have in my twenty five years on this planet, I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen a ghost. I've never seen anything that would make me think there was. UFOs out there. I love watching those videos. Like just every once in a while, you get in like a kick, and you're like, "I'll watch this." Like go down a wormhole on YouTube. YouTube, yeah, exactly. <laughs> love YouTube. Um, and it was just one of those things that I will never ever forget. I, you know, we do live, and I think what me and Matt have both talked about the shape of it, and it looked like a fighter jet. It had the it it, it had a, a pointed nose. But it didn't have that real defined lines like an F-16 does. And there was no sound. And it was Absolutely no, no sound. No sound at all. It was completely so silent. Couldn't hear like it was a drone. Um, now, we do live around Fort Belvoir. And that's going to be my, like, what I'm going to take away from it. Because I'm not ready to say that UFOs are real. I'm just going to assume that that was some kind of military drone, um, s silent aircraft kind of machine that moves at extremely fast miles per hour in weird direction the other thing i uh, thought it could be was a satellite but it wouldn't was, be that low i it, wasn't that close it's not going to be in but, orbit but it that low. i know but it could have maybe it was deceiving to our eyes because like i said you're not going to see a satellite in the day yeah, i know that's that's i don't i mean when when i first was looking at it so i saw it for probably about 15 to 20 seconds i would say five seconds longer than I did, yeah probably. and it was literally directly above my head and that's was it big it it looked to me like it's like fighter I said, jet size like but you don't know we could, there was no can, depth right, perception right, right, because right, it was right. like translucent and reflective like you couldn't see it i'm like getting goosebumps airplane. just thinking about it right now it was honestly. pretty crazy very i really weird. wish i could like the fact and the thing the thing that really like my caveat to it is the fact that it disappeared it was completely gone right i mean it and was 10 15 so seconds and it was away. like gone just completely gone straight into the atmosphere it was billy he was flying that thing like, oh, i'm gonna get these fuckers a, i threw a frisbee at you guys <laughs> <laughs> i wish it was yeah, a frisbee. I would, I, I this wish. article says 73 ufo sightings in alexandria so far this year 74 mm. Call it in, boys. So what I'm saying is, no. it's not that special. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, d I don't want to say it's anything supernatural that we saw, but just the fact that I've never seen anything like that, and we live around so many military bases and airports. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, do you something think... to ponder. Don't judge us for thinking that we might have seen a UFO, guys. Do but... you think it was a plane? No, hundred percent. Oh no, dude, okay. you, guys you guys listen to that, Navy, was a... that U.S. Navy guy talk about the. Uh, UFOs before, right? The guy that's like got them on video. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think anybody thinks it's crazy I don't, to talk no, about No, no, I don't think it's crazy not, to talk about like it, but like, I don't want people to be like, oh, they just saw a freaking drone or something like that. It, there, there's a possibility, but there's... It would have had to have been a military drone. It was a military drone, drone if yes. it was a drone. It would have had that's, to have been, but I mean... That's literally the only thing that it could have been, other than Have you ever something. seen anything move that quick? No. Never. Never. It okay. was gone in an instant. Did that's you hear it? Insane. No. I'm talking it was like... completely silent. Like... You know, obviously off in a distance, but quarter sized to pin needle to completely gone within ten seconds. Ten seconds, yes. They're looking for your And it, it was right above my head. They were trying to bet. That's what they you. say, though. That's what that guy oh. was saying when he was watching. Well, they the, weren't um, finding us today. When they were tracking that one in the sky, though, that's that how they said it moved like that. It would just be like here one second, and then somewhere else the next second. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be looking at the skies for the rest of my life. Well, this he was. You, he, he was. He looked at me after it went away. He's like, I have goosebumps right now. I've. I just had goosebumps just talking about it. I do. 
I don't, I really don't know what it was, but it was it was definitely something to see. I'm glad we saw it. Kinda. Hopefully they don't come back. Kinda. I, I don't know. I really don't. Yeah. But it was. I, I wish everybody had seen it, so you guys were not like just trying to visualize it. But I almost started because there was kayakers around or paddleboarders, whatever. I almost shouted to them like at first, just thinking like as a, as you were seeing it, I was like, I want other people to see this. I, I, almost, I, w- I thought about pulling my phone time. out, but then, yeah. like, it was, yeah, you it was, going but that's what I'm going saying. That's how that fast. fast it was. Like, I literally you went like, to reach for my phone, this. and I was like, this is too far. As we yeah. were thinking about what's going on, it was gone. Yeah. Wow. It was. And it was <sighs> lower than a commercial airliner. Absolutely. When we first saw it. When we first I mean, saw unless it. Unless it was freaking massive. I mean, I. It was, it was, it, it looked like it was, yeah, unless it was just absolutely massive and just way up there, but it looked like I it was flying it, at the same, like, um, altitude as a helicopter. That, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where it was flying when we first it's saw it. pretty low. Yeah. And then to disappear without a sound. It's pretty weird. Without a sound. Didn't even hear it? Nope. No sound. I, I mean, I killed the motor. Mm-hmm. So, something to think about. Something to dream about. That's what I'm throwing this week. I'm throwing mini spaceships. <laughs> yeah. Throwing a UFO. Yeah. For, well, I'm not even going fishing on the res anymore. I'm just going UFO hunting. <laughs> Bring all my camera gear. SB Fishing TV changes his name. You have a telescope fish. you can borrow, dude, if you want to just glue your eyes to this guy. Um, well, That'd be horrible. No, I would never do that because then one's going to be looking back at you and be like, <laughs> See you, you're gonna never be able to sleep again for the rest of your life. Like, yeah. Next just time we see Alex, he's gonna have like a I want to believe just... shirt on and like some like binoculars around his neck. <laughs> he's always prepared. A, a couple of radios, <laughs> just like <laughs> a couple of tinfoil hats, just trying to find the aliens, man. <laughs> Alex is out on the road, just standing him. on I the front of the boat with a troll motor, <laughs> aluminum foil like hat on. No just rods, on. just out there UFO hunting. Or he's holding the <laughs> rod straight up in the air. Yeah. Come get me. You, get, you guys got him. Not, not, what? You guys what? got him? I'm looking for freaking aliens, man. Leave me alone. Believe. No, no, yeah, I've been here for three hours. I haven't seen one yet. <laughs> Remember in at end of Independence Day, that movie when all the people are on the roof with the signs that are like, Take me with you! Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just destroyed. They were Get it's wrecked. beautiful! Get wrecked. <laughs> That's what, you don't mess with aliens. Stay strapped yeah. or get clapped. That's, That's right. what I like to say. Well, Moving on. Tell me what you're throwing. Coming on Sunday. Oh, uh, yeah. it is Wednesday. So, Derby uh, weekend. Definitely going to be throwing. Where's that, James? Kerr? Kerr. Kerr. Yep. So, um, just co-angler. So, of course, I'm going to be, you know, holding it down with the finesse stuff. Probably have two spin rods. And, um. Definitely have two spin rods. Yeah, I'm going to. Scrounger, Kai Tag, definitely drop shot, shaky head. Shaky head worked for me last time, uh, and I know the drop shot works down there. And uh, it all depends, you know. Hopefully, my boater doesn't want to go up into the muddy stuff. I don't necessarily want to fish behind somebody like that. I'd rather fish out on points, um, fishing rock humps and things like that. I think it's a better chance for the co angler. But, you know, if that comes down to it, I'll probably have like a just a wacky rig Senko and a frog or something. Um, but I'm going to bring the whole, like, I'm just, I'm literally going to bring all I'm of my bringing, tackle. I'm bringing a lot. For, for Saturday to just try and figure it out. It's a new place. You know, I've fished it twice, but one day was with uh, Fultz and a buddy of ours, and we didn't have any success, but I think Joe was pretty new to that place. It's pretty far away from here. It's not like it's just like a day trip that you really want to do. It's kind of like one of those places that you want to, go down there for a couple days we live on the very northern tip of virginia and it's on the very southern tip yeah and so yeah and then uh hopefully our fountainhead tournaments are we we know for sure that they're starting uh towards the end of july but there might be a chance that we have one not this weekend probably the weekend that you'll be hearing this podcast um and then that will be a lot of different things so football jig, scrounger again, shake head, uh, Carolina rig. Gosh, I really want to get. Did you throw it today? I, I threw it a, I threw it a good amount. I threw a few different baits on it. I didn't throw it enough. I talked about it a lot, and I wish that I threw it. Now. I think Kerr is the place to go get confidence on it, and then come that's back. Oh, yeah. well, that's yeah, great point. I will be throwing it at Kerr, one hundred percent. That would be. 
Well, we got to go to the left, so I'll go last. Yeah. All Get right. To the left. I'm going scrounger, uh, football jig, and some form of big swim bait that I'm looking at right now on this wall. Don't know which one, but I'll pick one. Whatever Billy will let me throw. And I have a couple others. Uh, Glider soft body. Both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm really getting into throwing these bigger glides. It's so fun. Especially after Billy, he, the other day in the bubs, he put like a three-eighths or a half ounce weight in front of the trout, the hero trout. Yep. Where is that? that so uh, right there next yeah, that, to the white he's got three red tail. <clears throat> They same, smoked it. On same the same brand that uh, caught my PB on. Yeah, it, yep. me and Billy both caught our PB on. Same Hiroshima. Shima. Yep. Hiroshima Custom Baits. Hiroshima Custom. Stop touching my feet with your feet. We are all, are all barefoot under the table, so there's been some footsie going on. A lot, of, a lot of sandals. You guys have crazy sandal tans, by the way. You need uh, whale tails let over me here. Just, let me tell you something. You just kick those bad boys off when you get on the boat. Thank you. My, we did the I same. My you and I did the exact I, same thing on Sunday. I was like, "Yep, these are going to the bottom of the boat." I like having my thumb. My and the way that my drug. boat is set up with all the, the hooks. Oh yeah, you would, I mean, I would. You would die of tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> my boat is. Yeah, it, it needs some work. I just cleaned the front half of mine. Really? I didn't get into the second section yet, but yeah, I did the clean the whole front half. I need to do the rest. I mean, by the end of the day, dude, I I like. I mean, I'm the same way as you. I'm sure you just clip stuff off and like. Because I don't want to put it in a box because it's just going to get rusted. So I, I almost always put hooks directly into my trunk of my car. And then when I know they're dry, then they go back into my boxes in a, in a used box. Yeah. So I keep them all. I really want to catch one with a spoon. I haven't caught Have one with a spoon oh, yet. You haven't got one yet. Nope. I threw it a decent amount today, too. Yeah, you did? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess those are probably. My three big baits that I'll be I'll be throwing this next week or Funny so. Funny how none of us are talking about top water anymore. I was literally um, smoked a good one on a popper today. I heard that. Fried. I say I smoked a good one on a popper. He smoked me. I was paying no attention. Whoa, I was just like bloop, bloop, bloop. Like looking at the graph and just blows up on it. Absolutely fights like a maniac. You caught it? Yeah. That oh. was the first fish that of the day. That was the big one. That we had today? No, that was the second biggest. For the biggest was on the Kai Tech. Point or just up shallow? Um, no, it was actually pretty deep. Oh, it was yeah. it. You know before Beaver, that bend with the standing timber yep. on the left hand side? Mm -hmm. We were just fishing through that. Nice. Fish. Alex talked about fishing Popping that. Through there. We should go fish that standing timber right there. Past yeah, the we've been. Dude, that stuff is good. There's a lot of fish in there. Been graphing a lot of standing timber. Yeah. Like and just seeing those today, dots too. and stuff yeah. on just anything that's standing up out of the water. Yeah, they're just suspending on it. If you yeah. if I you can find some of the bank. bluegill today, that were jumping around like shad, and I was I literally thought it was shad. Trolled over to them. They were only like ten yards. I was like, let me just go look at these guys. Trolled over to them. I just saw a bunch of blue tails. What? It's Where was it? Out, out deep? It was in like forty feet of water. It was in front of standing timber, in the mouth of standing timber. That's wow, a, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, haven't you caught bluegill out in the bubbles before? I thought, uh, I thought somebody caught a bluegill. I want to say there. we have. I, Ace, a I think out Ace there. has. Definitely caught crappie. Yeah, yeah crappie, crappie for sure. Sense, but though. I thought I thought bluegill's kind of weird. Somebody I caught think a bluegill Ace did out catch there. Catch a bluegill out there. Yeah. On the wacky rig. I felt like on the I cut it. I cut it. Fought it for twenty five minutes. No, the three pounder you caught last year. He did fight that thing for over six minutes. I can tell you that. Four pound test. He was like, "Oh, it's not that big." The it's only that person it's I know big. of that will th bring an ultralight to a bass fishing tournament yeah. and throw it religiously all day. We're twenty pounds. We're in the classic, doesn't classic doesn't and he's money. throwing that thing, dude. I was like, "What are you doing?" He's catching three, four pounders <laughs> with four pound Jeez. lines. Legend. He's an animal. He is a legend. Right. We need him back, Billy. Billy. What are you throwing this week? Let me look on the save, wall. Save that for. <laughs> <laughs> We'll save that for the end. <laughs> uh, what you throwing? What am I throwing? Um, tell me. I don't know. I don't want to go to the res this week. I'm going to try something different. Chick leg? 
Oh, lake X? Lake X. Lake X. I saw a buddy of mine. Um, and put a clarity. Yeah. Let's, let's go wade the river. This old dude I know that goes out there. We saw him at the rest today. He was like, man, I went down there and it was like 10 feet of visibility. I was like, I'm out of here. I was like, that sounds awesome. I don't know <laughs> yeah. why you left. <laughs> He's like, he just. I think mag shaky in that place. If you find the right tree. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's. They're think, definitely deep and um They're deep. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're probably super deep. They're, the other thing is the it's not about finding like the tree, it's there's so many trees there. I know what you mean, but it's like hard to I could I wouldn't even know where to start. You just gotta that's what I'm saying, like you just gotta run as many as you can, like we always do, and just put they like put overlap them. though, the yes. whole way around. Yeah, I mean they're literally just laying all over to, all on top of it's each other. It's stupid. I wanna try the deep stuff. I wanna try to find something deep. Well, the cool thing about the that dam, place, the dam is the dam is a good, but anything between the the mouth of both creeks to the dam is pretty much dead water. It's just like forty feet of a bowl, and there's just no structure whatsoever. It's just empty. Well, so that's it kind why of rules out that whole section. That's why know? I want to kind of find where it breaks from that forty feet to twenty feet, and then even if it doesn't break that fast, maybe find like that spot where it's a two foot divot. I did find a I feel like that's the type a topo of stuff. map of that place online. Did you really? Mm -hmm. Solid one? Mm -hmm. Like 10 foot uh, intervals? No, like legit, like like a Dang. Navionics style. Wow, we're going to take a look at that. Yeah, That's pretty cool. That's very cool. Um, so what are you going to throw there? Something translucent. Probably mag shaky head. Uh, yeah, some kind of big worm. Um, I don't know. Today I tried that for the first time that... Um, what you call it? The uh, worm? The the uh, the leader thing that weight. Leader. Oh, the it's the deep tracer. <clears throat> yeah, the deep tracer. Actually looked pretty sweet, and it was getting those baits down really fast. So, um, it I think it works a lot better on like a steady tree bait, like a cranking, like a crank down or something. Like the Nate's bait looked sweet on it, but like a glide bait didn't really work like I thought it would because it's just pulling it down the whole time so unless you're fishing on bottom bottom um, but if you are th if you're throwing a crank down and you get it like 10 feet down it's gonna pull it to like 20 feet down so it's pretty sweet for that uh, so probably something like that um, and stop big top water in the evening and the mornings dude I was catching a bunch of fish on wake bait in the golf course pond not mm. far from here mm. a couple nights ago Big wake baits. I love that shit at night. It's terrifying. It is terrifying. <laughs> I mean, when it gets like 10 went... feet out from the bank, you're like, oh. <laughs> it gets like, <laughs> you don't want to do Here happen. we go. <laughs> you're like, don't do it. It gets a foot away from the bank, yeah. and then Bertha comes out of nowhere, and <laughs> you're just like, oh. Thinking it was out, funny. He sent me a picture. Jumping out he was you. sending me pictures from the night before. He like, sent me one. It was like, two, three, four, six. I was like, damn, he wrecked them. Yeah. It was on fire, dude. It was great. And it was the big, like, uh, that evergreen uh, dock knocker or the dock rat or whatever I think it's, yep. I don't know what it's called. Dock knocker? That sounds right, I think. Big, like, three piece jointed weight bait. Uh, anyways, that, maybe a um, big walking bait in the morning over at Lake, Lake X. If nice. I get out there early enough. I think that place, you, if you could get out there early or stay late, you got a better shot of catching something a little bit out of that deep wood. I think they'll probably come shallow on this in the mm -hmm. low light, earlier or late. All the banks are so steep; they don't have far to go. Yeah, and that bait. I mean, the baits always get so active in the evenings and mm -hmm. stuff. I think that they'll come out for sure from their from their. Uh, the light penetration of that place has got to be crazy. I'm sure that I'm sure the temperature difference between surface and like bottom is way less dramatic than like the res you know we're like five feet down it's like 10 degrees colder i'm mm -hmm. sure it's like pretty warm all the way through because it's so clear but we'll see we'll see mm. what do you got maddie mm. sleep what you got um so first thing friday i'm gonna drive down to Curham and stay at my buddy's place in just outside of richmond and he says he's got a private place for us to go so i'm pretty much just gonna throw a frog there Frog and, frog and a swim jig there. And then Saturday, obviously, we're going to go down to current practice. Uh, we'll have a Carolina rig, some form of swim bait, whether that be scrounger, kai tech, underspin, 
stuff like that. Um, hair jig I'll have with me, jigging spoon, like Alex said, we heard people catch them on that. And then spinning rod stuff, shaky head, drop shot, Ned rig, and a football jig, of course. Swine. Can't forget that foos. <laughs> Foosball. All right. All right. Well, close uh, this thing out, man. That's gonna wrap it up for episode eighteen. Thank you guys for listening. Um, if you guys hear this before, we have a elite series event. So Bassmaster Fantasy, pick your teams. Uh, it's happening on. Oof. Don't know the dates. That's. That's um that's my fault. You Sorry have guys. One job. But St. Lawrence River. <laughs> that should be yeah. fun. Um so we'll we'll post that on the Instagram. Just keep blowing up that Instagram. We love seeing those comments. Um Roasts, whatever you want. Roasts. Yeah, Rank, we're not gonna go into that. Keep no, your critiques no. coming. <laughs> we love it, boys. <laughs> so we'll we'll catch you guys on the next time. <laughs> <laughs> Peace and blessings. You disgusting animal.